Christ and Time, Part 1, Close Contact with Paradise, a prayer of St. G. A golden age appeared, but was not seen, for the gold was of immediate interest, but would fade. The age was the gift, fixed to the center of time, a thing also which would end. Yet life of any duration is irreplaceable. Gold rocks are just rocks. Now two other gifts were inherent to the age, frankincense to sanctify it, and myrrh to prepare it for death. Each man shall look at his own life to see where these have fallen into place. There is a man of whom we shall speak, for it is he who exists, and all other things of the world are in his liege. Our faith in you and our thinking do not start from the spatial contrast between the here and the beyond, but from their distinction among formerly and now and then. This contrast does exist in invisible heaven and a visible earth. Invisible powers and authorities are at work. We men observe only the visible deeds executed by the earthly agents of those powers. But this invisible course of events is itself completely subjected to the progress of time. Faith makes the distinction between the times having an, over, an awareness of things hoped for, a conviction of things not seen. Our faith has close contact with paradise. All revelation has an anchorage in time. Not all fragments of ongoing time constitute the history of our redemption, but rather some specified points singled out from time as a whole. These are divinely selected, divinely powered. We are often told these are near. Our salvation, is, it is said, comes at the appearance of our Lord Jesus Christ, which the blessed and only sovereign will show at the appropriate time. And Jesus says, my time to go up to Jerusalem has not yet come. Your time is always ready. The disciples can choose to go up to Jerusalem at any time, but Jesus stands in the midst of the divine plan of salvation, going when and where the time is fixed by God. We are told to redeem the time, as judgment is to begin at the house of God. This time and significance began at the death and resurrection of Christ. The, Jesus, the Jews spoke of the day of the Lord and Jesus of that day and hour, concerning the time of which no one knows. The time of Christ, your death, is not always ready, as it is for the unbelieving brothers. Salvation is always at hand, to us you say, the mystery which has been hidden for ages has now been revealed to the saints, to whom God has willed to make it known. Only to you does eternity belong. You are the Lord over the ages. These ages are linear, not circular as the Greeks proposed. Eternity past to eternity future is a line of time. Eternity is not timelessness. This can be seen from the scriptures. Jesus saying, my time is near. The kingdom of God has come near. Even the demons, have you come hither to torment us before the time? Jesus again, the time has come for the judgment to begin at the house of God. We are to redeem the time. These and others portray that you have placed us in a logical predetermined sequence of events. The course, though of course these are high thoughts, impossible for us to understand. You, Lord, rule over time. The language used has sometimes confused us, as the history of earth is contained within the timeline of eternity. We have Jesus to say, the sun does not know the time of the end. Then also, I saw Satan fall like lightning, though we see him still active in the world. This is to say that in your incarnation you were not given to see all things yet as eternal god the fall of satan was an established fact seen from your earthly life the result of the death and resurrection of christ is that the lordship over all things is committed to you by this redemptive event the entire creation is affected you're ascended to the right hand of god and all things are put under your feet History and the completion of the new creation must still travel 
the prescribed way from your centrality as the absolute one to the many. Since reaching this midpoint of history in your death and resurrection, the world of varying insubstantial circumstances is drawn into the redemptive history in a decisive manner. In a sense, nothing else in all of history has mattered. Also, it may be said, everything matters, for all was ordained by you. The decisive victory has already been won for the entire world. Since reaching the midpoint of the death and resurrection, the world was drawn into the redemptive history, as we have said. This is among the things we are, not, are to meditate upon. All that is noble, right, pure, lovely, whatsoever is honorable, admirable, excellent, praiseworthy. Think on these things. Amen.